Patient which was managed by limited restriction. Patient was managed with an end dialysis and a transverse colon fistula at the time. While in the ward, sir, on post-operatively four or five, sir, she developed and she developed a bilious discharge on the midline, sir, and she was managed as an intercutaneous fistula, sir. So we got a CT done. CT was suggestive of a hypodense lesion in the posterior to stoma, uh, which was suggestive of a collection, sir. So we had operated. Uh, so we had taken uh, for emergency last week, sir. Uh, uh, intraoperatively, approximately three perforations were found, sir. The proximal most uh, was uh, around two and a half feet from uh, uh, three and a half feet from ICJ, sir, which was fashioned as an end dialysis. Currently, sir, patient is uh, sleeping. Currently, sir, she is fine, sir. Stoma is functional, sir, and uh, uh, she has central line in situ, sir, and uh, she is orally allowed, sir, and she is uh, uh, stroma output is currently 1200 ml per uh, day. Urine output, sir, is fair, sir, 1300 ml, sir. Only issue, sir, she is having uh, slough in the midline, sir, which uh, which we are doing dressing, sir, and she has uh, fe fever, sir. Uh, one not four, sir. Last uh, night, she had one episode, sir. Otherwise, sir, uh, uh, investigation wise, also, sir, currently she is on in injection Magnus and Tigacycline, sir. Day 11. Anything? Local that he has missed out? <coughs> that is Gokul. Yes, sir. <coughs> Patient is having uh, fever since last 20 days. Uh, we are currently ruling out the causes for fever, but currently all tests turned out to be negative. All the fever provided. But there is a clear cut indication, SSI is there, no? Yes, sir. So what do you have to rule out? Yes, sir. There is SSI. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you classify or grade SSI, Terry? Uh, so we use the A score, sir. And we grade them, sir. Right. What is the score like? I don't know the exact size. Okay. Who's going to answer that? Sir, SSI can be uh, superficial, deep, and organized space, sir. And uh, it can be uh, divided on the uh, on according to Southampton scoring and uh, Southampton scoring, sir. So Southampton is one. Yes, sir. And uh, any other score? ASEPS score, like he mentioned. What is that? Sir, so it is. Uh, Additional treatment uh, required or not? Uh, Serosanguineous uh, discharge. A for erythema is present or not? Uh, P for the pulmonary discharge and uh, sepsis. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No worries. So, hospital stay also. Hospital stay also get So, what would be the score here, roughly, Himanshu? So, roughly around the. Uh, so it's around more than 10, sir. So in any case, anything more than 10 would mean what? Bad score? Yes. Prolonged SSI will, which will lead to prolonged hospital stay. So it's going to increase your hospital stay. So what what one, two, three steps that you would take to fix her? If you're the registrar uh, who is managing. Uh, sir, if you're suspecting... Uh, yeah, sir, this is the case. What would you do? Tell them so since there is an SSI and there is a clear-cut source of uh, infection, so we'll do source control, sir. And we'll first take, uh, we'll start empirical antibiotics and then send culture accordingly and then, sir, we'll uh, uh, narrow the antibiotics, sir. And meanwhile, we'll also do source control in the form of peritoneal lavage, sir, and daily dressing, sir. Dressings to be done to rule. So what he has said, don't repeat. Uh, anything more, Ram? Sir, uh, sir we'll uh, do... Uh, Dressing, debridement, and uh, send first culture, sir. There was a nutritionist. So that's why I was waiting, you will talk. We ignore nutrition, which should be supported. <laughs> because nothing heals unless your albumin is okay. So, what is the albumin glucose so nutrition? 1.8. So, we are doing fine there. And uh, the answer to low albumin is not albutac. We need to correct the calories. Positive. And, the cause. and sepsis causes catabolism, so that itself will produce a malnutrition of nature. With malnutrition, the proteins are deficient, and uh, uh, proteins are necessary for tissue building. So in any case, it doesn't do any good. You can add antibiotics, you can keep on doing many things, but if you don't have adequate proteins in the body, healing won't happen. And the ab ability to combat sepsis would not be. Okay? Yes. So don't miss out on that. Nutrition is important. Daily debridement is important. Dressings are important, which become a part of hospital debridement. And preventing dehydration becomes important, which is D again. And then do the usual correct things about culture. What culture would you order? Sir, I would order a deep uh, 
डीप टिश्यू कल्चर बहुत एरो भी है डीप टिश्यू फॉर एरो एरो भी एरो भी एंड आल्सो फंगस दे टेंड दे आर इम्यून सप्रेस्ड सो एनेरोबिक इंफेक्शन फंगल इंफेक्शन ऑल बिकम्स एन इशू एंड यू मस्ट बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल इन मेकिंग श्योर दैट यू गेट द एक्चुअल रीजन फॉर परसिस्टेंस ऑफ सेप्सिस एंड सो टू रिपीट इट फॉर द फर्स्ट इयर्स it is these are patient related issues and then there are those that are related to the surgeon also what surgery was done what is was it optimum was there was some infection due to technical reasons which we need to take care of and thirdly when do you want to intervene and what would be your intervention sir in this case uh, i would not like to intervene sir because patient is currently in catabolism which is she is in sepsis sir I would like to build her up both nutritionally and biochemically, and then plan for a either but definitive abdominal wall closure. So meanwhile, I would like to manage her as an burst abdomen, open abdomen, open abdomen, and <coughs> that's very nicely answered. And he gave a balanced answer that I'll build him, up, build her up, make her suitable for that treatment, and that would mean taking care of the catabolic state, making her nutritionally good, and this is not the right time to be intervening. It will cause problems so don't be in a hurry to close the abdomen because then you will be burying all the problems inside and they'll come out as a major issue with anaerobes really enjoying the anaerobic environment leaving it all open is lots of oxygen so anaerobes won't grow and that's how you manage what are the fluids you ordered uh, so fluids are <coughs> currently she is on injection tpn sir which comes around to 1 liter sir and uh, otherwise we ordered four bags sir or d5 and ns sir along with uh, A multivitamin infusion in this. Otherwise, she is only allowed, sir. So electrolytes, sir, we are managing only by with ORS and. Uh, uh, Why should we insist on enteral feeding more? Sir, because uh, enteral feed is the natural and natural. We should prefer natural process whenever it is possible. And sir, uh, if we use parenteral nutrition, first we have to uh, insert a line, center line. That is, will be a source of infection for the patient. Plus, sir, inter in parental nutrition, the intestinal villi they go atrophy, and that's why we have to prefer internal nutrition more. Very nicely answered. Anything to add? As uh, so second year, along with in, along with the atrophy of the villi, there is uh, imbalance in the intrahepatic circulation also, and translocation of the gut, which again leads to the additional problem of the thing. Uh, so all this could be managed by all this all. All this could be just managed by giving her orally, sir. Enteral is physiological, as you rightly said. Gut atrophy can be prevented if you use enteral. If you use guts, you don't lose them. Thirdly, transgut migration of bacteria would happen, with, which is a major killer that lead to septicemia due to uh, gram-negative organisms can be killer. And uh, there is a gut-brain axis that I talked about in my. which we ignore that leave those big holes in it so it can be a challenge to um, keep the gut intact so integrity of gut is very very important and that is achieved by intro suppose you cannot give this patient adequate nutrition in any case you can give even sips of water as long as the gut is moving mm -hmm. there's one thing you all missed you also missed so if there is a if there is a gut is not used the bile duct also doesn't move so there is cholestasis which leads to jaundice obstructive jaundice and then you cannot give nutrition have you understood students villus atrophy it's more physiological it doesn't cause the gut to lose its integrity there is no transgut migration of bacteria there is no cholestasis which can lead to jaundice and fifth intrahepatic circulation of bile Your bile keeps getting reabsorbed. It's necessary, so always keep the gut in use, whatever length of gut you have. It may not be a complete gut. You may not give her all the food that you take, so she doesn't necessarily have to take pizza now, but she can take some water. Something should go. But don't keep the guts absolutely without work and function. Okay? Yes, sir. He is a he had a issue. He had a major issue of road traffic accident on 8th of November, sir. Uh, during which he suffered. Yes, yes.
सो पेशेंट इज अ ट्वेंटी फाइव जेंटलमैन सर विथ एलेजेड इश्यू ऑफ आरटीए रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट ऑन एट ऑफ नवंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री ड्यूरिंग विच इज सफर्ड इंजरीज टू इज हेड चेस्ट एंड एबडामिन सर वेन ही प्रेजेंटेड टू अस ही प्रेजेंटेड टू अस विथ शॉर्टनेस ऑफ ब्रेथ एंड सर पेन एबडामिन सर एट द टाइम अल्ट्रासाउंड फास्ट वॉज सजेस्टिव फॉर ई फास्ट ई फास्ट वॉज पॉजिटिव इन व्यू ऑफ राइट हीमोथोरैक्स एंड फ्री फ्लूड इन द पेरेटोनियम सर We got a C C T hole abdomen along with N C C T head done, sir. Uh, so from top to bottom he had pneumocephalus, sir. Multiple maxillofacial fractures, sir. He had seven to seven rib fractures, sir, and right uh, moderate hemothorax and grade four liver injury in the abdomen, sir, with no other associated uh, solid organ injury, sir. At that time, sir, patient was vitally stable, so he was managed conservatively in the I C U, sir, as per protocol, sir. Uh, he was uh, shifted to I C U, sir, last week, sir. Uh, currently sir uh, and uh, currently sir patient uh, is uh, gcs is 9 by uh, 10 by 15 sir and sir is vitally stable sir he is on oxy- oxygen 2 liter uh, is, uh, saturation is 98% sir bilaterally sir air entry is present there is uh, slightly reduced air entry on the right side sir on account of hemothorax sir icd is draining around uh, 10 ml sir daily sir abdomen wise sir is per abdomen is soft uh, there is no guarding rigidity or tenderness sir and uh, he is uh, allowed uh, on account of poor gcs sir we started him rt feeds instead of oral sir so for that he is pass- uh, and also he is passing student letter sir uh, sir only issue sir is this patient is decreased consciousness sir uh, we got a repeat ncct head done which revealed diffuse cerebral edema sir on metabolic profile sir he had chronic hyponatremia sir 121 was the last sodium sir so uh, we have started him uh, on sodium correction sir and for cerebral edema we have given him mannitol sir uh, patient gcs from last night it has improved sir he is now responding to command sir today's gcs would be sir around 12 by 15 sir Uh, otherwise sir we have uh, and also patient sir complaining of paraparesis sir for which we have done x-ray sir but x-ray suggestive of no any bony injury sir so we have got an mri spine which is scheduled sir next week coming week sir let me try the ram the so respiration doesn't look very good the accessory muscles of respiration are weak and it's a jerky respiration and some bit of paradoxical shit i don't know what is the fractures like there is no seven to seven fracture fracture there is no pain sir i would be very careful in that assessment because i can see this part having a flimmer okay. this is going in right yes sir On inspiration, the rest of the chest should move. Whole chest should move outward. Yes. But this head is going in. You can see that paradox. So, with this flail, we don't have a problem with the GIT. Neovenkeflus was a problem. We could indicate breach somewhere in the base. No CSF rhinorrhea. No sir, no, no CSF rhinorrhea or otorrhea. How will you differentiate this rhinorrhea from the usual nasal discharge? Actually, <coughs> we can uh, we can do a test called bedside handkerchief test. So in this, we have to collect the discharge in a handkerchief, and uh, if it is a CSF, then the uh, handkerchief won't get stiff. Uh, if it is a no- normal uh, discharge, nasal discharge, uh, the, it will dry up and the handkerchief will get stiff, sir. So next we can do beta transferrin assay in bio. We can send the sample for beta to transferrin. And uh, thirdly, sir, we can check for a sign called halo sign or target sign, uh, in which we can collect the discharge in a blotting paper and we can see whether the in, if it is a CSF rhinorrhea, we will get a drop of blood in between surrounded by a uh, halo. So CSF rhinorrhea won't stop on application of uh, snip. Sir, on hanging. Uh, If there is blood in it, it won't clot. Blood mixed with CSF does not clot. Blood mixed with bile does not clot. Blood mixed with urine does not clot, unless there is more blood than urine. If they all have fibrolysin, right? Blood mixed with acidic fluid does not clot. So the usual system, hemobilia, the blood in the bile it does not clot unless the blood is so much that bile is less. Due to fibrolysis, fibrolysis doesn't let that you know fibrosis happen. The clots don't form. So that's natural. Otherwise, you will get blocks everywhere, you know, in your system. Similarly, here CSF is mixed with it. 
And another thing is to test for sugar. You'll find the sugar levels are high with CSF mixture. Unless the patient is a diabetic, that is a different story. And there is also a diabetes of trauma. What is that, Karan? What is the diabetes of trauma? You finish your MRCS, so you should be able to answer that. Because of the stress, you know, there is hyperglycemia to uh, make up for the stress that the body is going through. There is insulin. Yes. Because the corticosteroid and the ad uh, adrenaline, the beta 2 agonists, both of them are, uh, cause increased blood sugar it levels. Is, so it's a good news or bad news? So it is good news for some time unless it goes out of control. So, uh, that's an art of answering. What did he say? It's a good news until such time when it goes out of control, which is the answer. So that's well answered. And it makes an impact. If you answer properly, every examiner thinks, you know, balanced head. So whenever he'll work, settle down to be a focused worker, he'll do well because he can comprehend. And then importantly, communicate. You may comprehend. If you don't communicate, it doesn't work. Not that you have missed any points, but this point is important, right? And these tests are very simple, they are bedside. So, hello, side, put on the cheek, CSF here, hello around. Blood in it doesn't clot. Sugar is high. What are the do's and don'ts in a patient who's got CSF dinoria? Do's first. If you don't know, say you don't know, so that you can see what First, we should uh, suspect anterior cranial fossa injury. We should check for. Okay, you suspected it. What are the do's? Obviously, it's an injury to the base of skull. Sabya. Cervical collar stability, we can prove it. Okay. Don't know, sir. Don't know. They got so. To say don't know, why do you try taking so long? Pressure. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Acha, you are. Uh, sir, uh, will uh, uh, development of cerebral edema, sir, and uh, anti epileptic surgery is started. Oh, okay. So, so start you don't. Don't. So so don't would be no hypo. Uh, sir, no hypotonic solution should be given because there is there could be head injury. So, so avoid D five, sir. Engine insertion should be. Do you want to ask that? For D5, who is going to give D5 anyway? D5 also causes uh, some bit of diuresis. It reduces edema, sir. Yes, the do's are after I tell you the don'ts. Don'ts are, don't pack it. This nose should not be packed because this is a natural bar hole. What is bar hole? You create an opening into the space, right? So here it's a natural bar hole. If you block it, intracranial tension would rise. You don't block it. If the patient is conscious, avoid sneezing. Why? Air is sucked in after sneeze. Pneumoencephalus happens due to that. Yeah. Three, start antibiotics. These are the do's. Don't keep the patient head and up. Why? The leak would increase. So should he be head down? No. Neutral position. And what's the neutral position for head injury? Tonsillectomy position. What is tonsillectomy position? Three-fourth prone. Okay. Antibiotics I've already told you. You don't necessarily need to do anything active. So don't intervene. Later on you can put a patch at the base, which can be a dural patch, it can be some fascia. There are artificial patches also available. This is how you manage. Is it clear? Yes, sir. It applies to CSF rhinorrhea, to CSF otoria. The rest is all bunkum. Don't give this, don't give that. That is a part of head injury management anyway. So manage it like you do any head injury management where you can give many tall or a D5. You said D5 should not be given. Why can be given? It is given actually because it causes reducing <coughs> reduction in edema. <coughs> you have understood all of you what I said? So this is necessary in all these patients. A lot of us will just put the head up because of the tongue fall problem. 
the tongue falls more often if you keep the patient in this position. It's better to keep the patient three foot tall. They call it tonsillectomy position. Post tonsillectomy, that's how they used to keep patients. The bleeding should not happen. Is that clear to all? Yes, sir. It's got some element of flail. How do you take your decision? So, for flail, just the management is uh, earlier refixation was to be done, sir. Now it has been abandoned, sir. Now it is usually uh, intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Adequate no, analgesia. It was abandoned, I think, 25 years ago. Yes, sir, it was. No, 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 not done, sir. How so, is. Uh, 25 years ago, you were born. Oh. So, it was abandoned at that time. <coughs> and fixation has got no role. Strapping is obsolete, contraindicated. Why is strapping contraindicated? Sir, <coughs> reduces ventilation. And this is paradoxical movement. So, we can produce, provide some splint. Which splint you'll provide? So we'll uh, do intermittent positive pressure spl uh, ventilation, pneumatic splint. splint. Pneumatic. Pneumatic Internal splint. pneumatic splint is lung. Yes. So you control the ventilation, so the lung acts as a splint, air-filled splint. So control your respiration. If you don't have the facility for IPPV, tracheostomy, to reduce the dead space. But everything today, the more, only thing that has changed is ABG. Assessment of ventilation is important. Pain management by doing intercostal blocks and IPPV and epidural blocks are considered a standard of care. They really help. And what do you use for the epidural block, uh, Sabya? Uh, sir, uh, patient, patient <coughs> own, sir, uh, sir, we use bupivacaine and uh, lidocaine mixture, sir. People use morphine also now. Why is morphine contraindicated in chest injury? This is a pharma question. It inhibits, it, it inhibits respiration. respiration. So it causes, it's a central. In fact, uh, morphine suppresses everything in the brain except three centers. What are those? Oh, yes, louder. CTZ, no? Vomiting center two. Third nerve nucleus, so pupillary constriction. And third, this is a pharma question. Sympathetic over okay. So, other everything goes down. So, respiration goes down. But, by virtue of pain relief, the ventilation improves in small doses. You need to tighten the dose. Well. Then, morphine in small doses is good. There is a WHO ladder of pain management, which we should follow. But these patients require either this or intercostal block, or epidural. If the ventilation is taken care of, if it is pain free, and if you can have internal pneumatic splinting, Clear now? Fifty thing. Provided you are here and you are alert. <coughs> I can bet on it. You go to many coaching classes, do their MCQs, this won't talk. They are not going to talk about it. So this is not what they want they're wanting to do. Understanding is more. Twenty three gentlemen sir came to us with complaints of pain abdomen and non passive and student fetters for the past five days, sir. Uh, sir, uh, on examination, sir, he had tachycardia, sir. He had uh, uh, on a, his uh, respiratory system and CVS was un unremarkable, sir. On per abdomen, there was uh, epigastric tenderness and guarding, sir. Rest of the abdomen was distended, sir. And there was shifting dullness also present, sir. We got an ultrasound and CT done at that time, sir, which was suggestive of a acute necrotizing gallstone induced pancreatitis with C modified CT severity score of 8 by 10 with peripancreatic collection, sir. At that time, he was shifted to ICU for some management, sir. Since then, uh, he was actually uh, intubated in ICU and have extubated also, sir. Then I, he was stabilized and shifted to our side, sir. Uh, sir, uh, during the ICU stay, he also developed abdominal compartment syndrome, sir, because he had uh, abdominal distension and his IAP reading was uh, increased, sir, along with onset of oliguria, sir, for which drain was inserted, sir. Uh, drain is reading currently around 200 ml zero per sir. Uh, sir, today's on morning uh, examination, sir, his Apache was 8, sir. Uh, per uh, 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 sub BP sir is 11976, pulse rate is 96 sir, and uh, he was uh, he had one episode of fever sir last night sir, and sir drain is draining around 200 ml zero percent sir. Respiratory examination sir, left side there is decreased energy in the basal side sir. Earlier there was bilateral sir, so we had got an X-ray done which was suggestive of bilateral pleural effusion. So we had done taps sir, which drained around 100 ml uh, on the right side and 50 ml on the left side sir, zero serous fluid sir. So we had sent for examination which turned out to be reactive sir. Currently sir he has left sided uh, decreased energy sir. And abdomen, sir, his abdomen is descended, sir. Uh, he is not pa his bowel sounds are present, but he is not past stool and flatter, sir. And 
otherwise sir uh, his urine output also is sir adequate sir uh, urine output is 800 ml sir so you are say, suggesting that he is getting better first of all i must com- compliment him at the regist- registrar the way he has presented the case would be a lesson for the post graduates to learn uh, the the hunky dory presentations don't help he has summed up everything in it he talked about the etiology of the pancreatitis he talked about the severity of pancreatitis he talked about the scoring he talked about the apache ct severity index he talked of the intraabdominal hypertension and he talked about what is coming out of it and he talked about what is happening now and in terms of the apache score he said patient is getting better so i don't have to ask anything as far as he's concerned that was a brilliant way to present it okay i'll ask him a different question so when the iip was raised how was the drain going to help Uh, sir, uh, actually, when the IIP was raised, sir, uh, IIP was raised along with there was alveolar acid, so we had made a diagnosis of abdominal compartment. No, no, that's what I'm saying. If the patient had abdominal compartment syndrome, don't take home a message that you can manage it by drain. The answer is decompressive laparotomy. But here, the cause for this rising tension was collection, which could be established on CT. Since it could be established, <coughs> releasing that. can take care of it but the answer to uh, abdominal compartment syndrome and he mentioned intraabdominal hypertension with oliguria so intraabdominal hypertension with one one of these kidneys lungs or brain or heart getting affected is abdominal compartment syndrome so what is abdominal compartment syndrome patient i just said sir uh, increase in intraabdominal pressure plus uh, any of the four organs involved kidney lung heart or liver repeat any of the uh, four repeat what i said increase in the intraabdominal pressure and any of the four organs affected uh, that will be abdominal compartment syndrome otherwise it's for intraabdominal mm-hmm. hypertension what is the normal pressure so less than 12 cm of water water or mercury water, water. 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 how do you measure it for their benefit quickly so rapidly we can measure both directly or indirectly sir directly we can introduce a probe into the abdominal cavity which is uh, which is measured by our measure machines and indirectly so we can uh, ask the we can uh, measure it by a foley catheter in the bladder so first we'll empty the bladder then we'll instill 50 ml of saline and clamp it sir then we'll uh, attach a cvp manometer to it sir and we'll keep it at the either we can keep it at the pubic symphysis or at the sternal level for sternal level we have to uh, uh, subtract the height sir and then we'll release the clamp sir and we'll let it normalize sir the level at which the uh, there's a ball marker sir which stabilizes sir the level at which it is it is the marking excellent right and if you plan decompressive laparotomy what precautions would you take let me complete with you so that i can say one time what precautions would you take okay what is decompressive cocktail so decompressive cocktail consists of sir three things sir uh, bicarbonate sir uh, uh, lasix and uh, normal saline because we expect reperfusion injury splanchnic pooling hypotension so we give fluids and this Oh, you also expect acidosis because of the contents of reperfusion going into circulation. So give soda by cup, and you expect pre-renal failure or renal failure due to flow not being adequate. So we give diuresis, and a lot of people prefer now giving diuresis with not menitol but with lasix or fusamide. Mm-hmm. So this is option. But fusamide causes that dilatation in the part or does a better job of it. Is it's a How does it function? Do you just separate? Sir, so it is a <coughs> loop diuretic, sir. It works uh, on the loop, uh, loop, uh, loops, loops, convoluted and uh, loop of Henle. Loop, loop of Henle. So since that is more effective in this case, the cause for failures I have already told you. So decompressive cocktail should be given before you do decompression. Otherwise, they should never drop. And what is reperfusion injury? Do you know that? Reperfusion. Reperfusion injury, sir. When we give oxygen to the tissue, and there is free free radical formation and it damages the tissue. Sir, uh, in long-term hypoxia, there are uh, during the uh, in ischemic changes occur in the tissue. But when we re- uh, reperfuse the tissue, the ischemic elements uh, like and free radicals they come out and it also cause damage to the surrounding. Understood. Reperfusion injury. It happens in the limbs. Also happens in abdomen. When there is a compartment syndrome, anaerobic environment exists. In anaerobic environment, there are more of lactate, yeah. acidotic materials. So, if you perfuse it, it will go to the system. That causes more damage. It's very important to take care of reperfusion injury. 
Okay. Now, when do you intervene in this case? Do we intervene or we are okay? So this is a case of necrotizing pancreatitis, sir. I will, uh, as per the guidelines, we will like to do a step up approach, sir. First, we'll try for uh, ultrasound guided any uh, guided drainage, sir. In this patient, it was not possible, sir. So we had uh, introduced a drain, sir. Next step would be, sir, any uh, endoscopy <coughs> procedure to do uh, retroperitoneal debridement, sir. VARD, it is no, video assisted retroperitoneal debridement. If that also fails, then we'll go for open surgery and do necrosecretory. So first we make a diagnosis if that necrotizing collection is infected or not. So we need to have know the indications for necrosecretory. And indications are number one, necrosis more than 50% or infected necrosis. But before that, these are two and three. Before that is number one, patient symptomatically getting worse. The clinically patient is getting worse, so it becomes an indication per se. And you should have a step up approach, is right. And necrosectomy is not a joke, you can create problems. So try to work with guided drainage. You can put the drain in the lesser sac. The second is endoscopic or laparoscopic necrosectomies can be done. On thirty, you can do an open approach. An open approach can be supracolic or infracolic. Because you can approach the lesser sac from above as well as from below. Most of us like to approach from above because it is easier for us. From below, <coughs> another risk is damage to the mesocolic mm -hmm. artery and also the uh, you know the supply to the colon so this can be a, something you look, look for and make sure that you so this patient be a candidate because he's having fever persistently fever you already have got us infected uh, necrosis but also ct severity indexes repeat ct also done it is all, all so it's same set as ct so side button and collection the other thing is the golden hour of surgery in gallstone induced pancreatitis if the patient presents in 48 hours or early you can do endoscopic retrieval of stone that relieves symptoms to a great degree because the whole concept of pancreatitis is stone blockade at the you know opening or some edema or whatever and intraductal hypertension leading to rupture and then enzymes dis digesting themselves so you need to be clear in your mind that it's idh that is kind of starting and hypoxia we understood idh intraductal hypertension if you tube or block it hypertension if the secretion is collected and then it ruptures and then it digests the pancreas and the most important morbidity is in patients who are obese so obesity is a risk factor because there is more fat and lipase is there which can cause fat necrosis. So more fat means more necrosis and more necrosis means bad outcome. But CT severity index also helps you take a decision about surgery. So all these factors have been taken to be taken uh, collectively and we don't uh, replace patient the features. You know this transfer stretch of the ablicus Indicative is, is indicative of fluid. And I, if I feel it, there is some collection here, but not as much. And there is some yeah. necrotic material which collects in the form of phlegmons, which have been given a name. Aseptic necrosis or walled up necrosis. We'll wait for it to settle down because the patient looks better to me, vitally. Infection, you intervene, you got to drain in. This is not the case where you find out an FNAC. The CT guided FNA is required to get the culture to send it for by, uh, for uh, you know bacterial infection. Now you don't. This is no rocket science. It has to be potentially infected. You intervened already. So that criteria goes off the window. Fever could be due to intervention. The fever due to necrosis is what we were talking about. So understand the difference. That's the first time you find out. It's like you know. Uh, the you know if you catheterize the patient you can't do culture sensitivity through the catheter yes, the whole thing the logic should be understood and uh, i would suggest get the catheter out and gradually reduce the size and shift it to if you can pass urine on his own it's already condom why do why don't we keep the catheter for long the site for infection too. very good one why infection with the foreign, with the foreign body next uncomfortable for the patient third they all correct third hour problems with tube in a tube that is the question tube in a tube 
Artificial formation. They are just guessing. No, that's not correct. Anything else? You want bunker. Location. Okay, so they don't know. Any tube in our body, I mean any tube, there is mucus produced. Keep it lubricated, yes? Yes, yes. 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 And then it can't be there forever. So there are cilia which push it out. So some it's coming out with urine or otherwise. Let's talk of urethra. The cilia have a very important action to keep the mucus out, to keep the secretions out. By putting a tube in it, you block the ciliary action. So mucus will collect. Stagnant mucus would become infected. And infection leads to fibrosis. And that leads to strictures. How can we prevent it, if I may ask you an intelligent question? I mean, a question is silly, intelligent answer. Well, so the reason I told you, if you can't think that quickly, I can't wait. Reduce the diameter of the catheter. So before you take the catheter out, management of catheter is extremely important. Pull the catheter, clean it every day. That is catheter uh, management. Pulling, because it's inside always. Pull, clean, and let it go. You can use betadine, you can use saline or something. One. Gradually reduce the size of the catheter so that there is breathing space for the tube. The cilia would continue to then function. Have you understood this? Same is the reason. It's not always a tube, they are blocked. These are very, very vague answers. But now I've given you the definite answer. That is the science behind it. So we can automatically put it through. Well, like we do for tracheostomy. It's not for an airway that you keep reducing the size of you. You know, they say decannulation. It is to reduce, that, allow the mucus to move. Otherwise, tracheitis, stricture. Because of fibrosis later on. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So anywhere, whatever tube you put inside another tube, anywhere, now you can make 10 MCQs out of it, okay? Catheter in the ureter, nasogastric tube in the esophagus, tracheostomy tube in the trachea, teen question away, baad ek hai. That's your MCQ. That's your need, speed, whatever names you give it. Hmm? Intellect is not tested. That, this is where you should understand. Perfect. We'll take a decision according. Uh, 20th gentleman sir came to us in emergency on last Wednesday sir with complaints of pain abdomen and non passage on student fetus for the past four days sir. Uh, sir on examination sir he was tachycardic sir and uh, tachypnic sir. His abdomen sir there was generalized guarding and rigidity present sir. X-ray was suggestive of gas under diaphragm sir in the, uh, under the right hemi diaphragm sir. He was, his pre-op Apache sir was 12 sir uh, on, uh, uh, on intra, uh, he was taken up for exploratory laparotomy sir. Intraoperatively, he was found to have a 2.5 liter fecoporulin contamination in the peritoneal cavity, sir. And uh, there was a 202 centimeter perforation half feet from ICJ, sir. There what is the likely etiology looking uh, at his condition? Sir, so we, we are suspecting uh, 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 typhoid, sir. Entry, entry. He's got the hypocritic faces. He's malnourished. Typical features of typhoid. Third week and presenting. Third week is the commonest time for perforation, right? You know, remember the testing for typhoid, we used that mnemonic Basu. Basu. So I had a friend whose name was from, from Basu. So we had made a... Blood culture, first week. Agglutination, that is Vidal, second week. Stool, third week. Urine, fourth week. So third week is when it's in the gut, that's where it perforates. But gallbladder can also perforate. It comes via gallbladder down. That's why that typhoid Mary story of gallbladder. Carriers, Carrier. they keep it there so that they can keep throwing for you. And then we remain all right. The carriers don't fall sick. That's the beauty of carrier. Sir, so we had made uh, stoma, sir, two feet from... We had done primary repair of the perforation during half feet from ICJ and we had made a stoma two feet from ICJ, sir. Uh, sir, he had developed midline SSI for which we had uh, removed the proline and burst, sir. They were still having tachypnea because he is malnourished. Actually, uh, and half an hour ago, sir, his stoma also preceded, sir. Mind. So, we are planning for the Let's see the stoma. So you can see now, this patient has gone into an emergency. Torch here. So we need to redo this surgery because stoma is receded. This is for surgery for... Aap thik hai ghabrai nahi? Thik ho jayega. Thik hai? Aram se. Bilkul relax ho ke so jayega. आज आप ये भी प्रॉब्लम आपकी ठीक हो जाएगी
थोड़ी कमजोरी है ना उस वजह से हुआ है ठीक हो जाएगा क्लासिकल stoma fixer you should keep it at least the last barrier should stay they are because of malnourishment this will happen and there is something called as zenker's degeneration that happens in typhoid patients what is zenker's degeneration uh, it happens in the pears patches of small intestine uh, due to it happens anywhere in the abdominal wall also due to due to lymphoid means hyperplasia zenker's degeneration is a physiological teaching Which is the myopathy in the muscles, so they go weak. So here also they go weak. Bare patches cause infection. Bare patches have nothing to do with the the wall. They have thin walls. They have weak muscles. That's the concept of your hypocritic face. They heal poorly. Wound dehiscence is common. Therefore, you should leave it open like we did here. So we've done laparostomy, and we'll not intervene immediately. We'll try to build him up. Build him. and manage it as an open abdomen and we will accept a hernia ventral hernia over killing him right now so what is what is this called as bailing out no living today to fight another day right there is no point i mean uh, a living problem is better than a dead solution so don't provide everything today it won't live So let's let's have that living problem. Twenty-one-year-old male sir, who uh, initially presented to us in the month of September with alleged issue of RTS, sir. At that time, he was found to have a grade five splenic injury for which splenectomy is done, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, so four days ago, he started developing pain, abdomen, and non-passing. Uh, X-ray was suggestive of air fluid levels, sir, and ultrasound was suggestive of multiple dilated bowel loops, sir. Uh, we had made a diagnosis of uh, intestinal obstruction, sir, uh, and uh, we had taken him for extrapolatory laparotomy, sir. Uh, intraoperatively, there were dense adhesions present between bowel to bowel and bowel to parietes, sir. And there was uh, bowel twisting around, uh, and uh, we had released the band, sir, and uh, untwisted the bowel. It was ठीक हो और समस्या पकड़ी गई ठीक हो गया वो आप हाँ आप चिंता नहीं करेंगे ठीक है चिंता करोगे तो फिर ठीक नहीं होगा so there was a sequel perfor- perforation I mean the cecum sir two into two centimeter how did the perforation in cecum happen if there is this obstruction for their benefit tell them Louder. Uh, so tension is equal to pressure into radius. Sir. So how would it apply to C cup? Uh, so when uh, the uh, uh, continuous the obstruction, obstruction and balloons out, the wall gets thin thinned and it ruptures. Wall gets thin blood because of the blood supply. If I expand uh, current into you into current, your skin would give way because blood supply won't reach. He has adapted it gradually. So this is a sudden process. That is why sudden is also important. If you give it time, then it can continue to grow. But since it is acute, the wall gets very thin, balloons out, and it gives way. That is blind loop obstruction leading to cecal perforation. And you manage it by stoma, rarely by cecostomy, but depending upon the situation, and the stoma would bring him back to normal. So something which can happen. And why do you say it is a a disadvantageous obstruction because of the patient presenting post surgery after four weeks? The definition of a disadvantageous obstruction is. Four weeks following surgery, less than four weeks, we call it pseudo obstruction only, which can be due to many factors. Adhesions don't form in that time. So four weeks onwards, post surgery, if the patient comes to you, post abdominal surgery, comes to you with obstruction, it's taken as that is it, unless proven otherwise. We, the diagnosis is made based on contrast and CT scan, and that's a standard. What? What is the gold standard for pseudo obstruction? CCT, contrast and CT scan. And what is the Uh, short version of it 
X-ray erect and supine abdomen. But that is okay to find out. But CT is mandatory because it tells you about the vascularity, tells you about the etiology if required, it tells you about the other features which can be assessed. Money. Okay, dear, let's start. Okay. Sir, we are gentlemen, sir. Known alcoholic presented to us in emergency with complaints of pain in the right side of abdomen and fever for the past ten days, sir. Uh, sir, on examination, he was tachycardic, sir. Abdomen was distended. Uh, there was uh, right-sided, sir. Tenderness was present and hepatomegaly was present, sir. And there was right eye for sir. Tenderness also present, sir. Sir, on ultrasound, there was uh, it was suggestive of a right lobe liver abscess in segment five, sir, of approximately 540 cc with a 2 mm rent, sir, uh, with collection in the uh, hepatorenal space and in the tracking down into right eye for sir. So since he had uh, since he was vitally stable and there was only localized tenderness, so we had gone for a minimally uh, pictal approach. We had done. A, Pictal catheterization of both the abscess cavity and the right leg fossa collection, sir. Since then, sir, the patient is stable, sir. Uh, he, uh, pictal is draining around 50 ml, sir, of the abscess cavity, sir, and right leg fossa cavity is draining around 20 ml, sir. Otherwise, the patient abdomen is, uh, is fine, sir. He is passing student fetus, sir. We have allowed him orally. And since he is also a uh, known alcohol consumer for the past 30 years, sir, we have given him injection thiamine and vitamin K also. Otherwise, the patient has no issues, sir. He's stable. stable. What's your impression, Arun? What do you make of it? I it was managed. No, no, you only managed it. I'm asking you, well, why did you put in? Now, what all has been done according to you? Sir, uh, since the tenderness was only local and there were no signs of diffuse peritonitis, so we managed by minimally invasive pectal insertion and we did not do a laparotomy. Very good. Answered well. And now, when would you do laparotomy in your patient support in this situation? Uh, if initially the present during the initial presentation there was signs that diffuse one is that the there is peritonitis you do that number two so if the rupture is uh, outside the peritoneal cavity is it in the pericardial cavity very good if it goes out of control and goes into the retroperitoneum or it gets into the pericardial space then you have to intervene again by step up approach remember what step up approach which he mentioned what is that approach step, step up, up. Do you also have a step, uh, step up ladder for pain management? No, same thing. We should not just give the last analgesic in all patients. There is a WHO ladder for pain management. There is a ladder for this also. Presently, patient is getting better. Don't bother about anything else. Patient comes back to you. You discharge him. He comes back to you with an ultrasound and says, "My abscess is still there, although I am fine." How do you explain that? Sir, uh, we will get ultrasound to see. Ultrasound, you bring the ultrasound. Sir, we will see if the content is organized or if it is still aspirable. I am asking you for a reason because you are answering well. That's why I am asking. Sir, I will start the patient on double dose metric. Sir, uh, radiological resolution takes time, then uh, clinical resolution. Takes longer. So it may not resolve radiologically, but the space would still be there and you would like this, the, unless, unless a radiologist knows that this was so many weeks old, he would be commenting it as an abscess only, the patient would get alarmed. So the radiological uh, dissolution takes a little longer. Gentlemen sir, presented to us two weeks ago with complaints of uh, pain abdomen and uh, constipation for the past seven days sir. Uh, sir, on examination his abdomen was distended sir with bowel loose palpable sir. Uh, X-ray was done, which was suggestive of a coffee bean appearance, suggestive of sigmoid volvulus, sir. Uh, coffee yeah. bean appearance. You've seen a coffee bean? <laughs> then it's okay. Otherwise, we keep talking about these things, we're not as seen. Like enkavi sauce, unless you see it, how do you know what is enkavi sauce? It's like kidney is bean shaped, bean is kidney shaped, and both are like each other. Lymph node is bean shaped, kidney is bean shaped. What is bean like, you don't know. And when somebody is asking, what is bean like? Kidney shaped. <laughs> right? So coffee bean is like a bean only. Sir, at that time, uh, sigmoid uh, volvulus diagnosis, diagnosis of sigmoid volvulus. What are the other radiological features of sigmoid volvulus? Sorry. There will be coffee bean. Uh, oh, yeah, no, coffee bean is one. Fryman Dale. What is Fryman Dale sign? So try radio. Three radio opaque lines converging into the right electron. Right. The next ray, lines two and three. Clear now? Like this.
right? And coffee bean looks like a coffee bean. You know, there are all these signs which confuse. Yeah, there is an X, right? Put it on the screen there, no? We'll discuss it there. What was done to the sigmoid dear? Uh, since intraoperatively there was a, a, a approximately 30 centimeter long redundant and uh, sigmoid colon present, sir, which was highly mobile, sir. Intra, uh, sir, transverse colon was also highly mobile, sir, approximately 20 centimeter in length, and intra, uh, sir, ascending and descending colon were also highly mobile and redundant, sir, considering the fact that they retrograde also, sir. So at that time, because patient also has repeated history of a uh, constipation, sir. So we had gone with the decision to uh, do sigma, uh, reset the sigmoid and uh, fashion it as a loop colostomy. Okay. Now, who gets it more often, vegetarians or non-vegetarians? <laughs> Why? To digest the cellulose uh, extra, so to digest the cellulose uh, component. You eat cellulose? Uh, no, sir. That's, That's in plant. the rabbits, man. No, 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 no. Or cows. When did you have cellulose no, last? Sir, no, sir. That, uh, no, no, let me know. I would be interested. When did you take cellulose last, Sabya? It's a very tasty thing to do. But where do you get cellulose from? You'll have to tell us. Cellulose are plant based. Grass, no? Yes. So when did you have it? <laughs> okay, never mind. What he's trying to say is, in all vegetarian animals, since they eat a lot of grass, they need cellulase for digestion. That has got to do with the appendix being long. Vegetarians have a high roughage diet. And what happens to the residue? So the digestion, the, the sigmoid continues to increase in size. They have a longer sigmoid then non-vegetarian is that's the logic but the base is narrow so it's a big loop with a narrow base it tends to rotate this way or this way which way does it go anti-clockwise in sigmoid right so it'll go more this way because that's the angle at which it is attached Sickle always clockwise because the way it is attached whenever it happens. So this is what it becomes the sign that you are referring to because sigma would be coming like this. So these are three lines seen. One, two, three. And that becomes prime and dial sign. Usually seen in vegetarians who eat a lot of roughage and sometimes it's precipitated by the taking of alcohol after that. And it can lead to sigmoid, eyelid sigmoid knotting also, which I've covered somewhere. And eyelid sigmoid knotting is when, when it's rotating, it drags along small <laughs> bowel with it at the base, which becomes a knot. So that becomes eyelid sigmoid knot. And this can lead to ischemia and faster progression of ischemic damage to the sigmoid. Eyelid sigmoid knotting. Very important. So sigmoid valvulus, if you see the x-ray, first is another coffee bean and one, two, three lines going to the right leg fossa. So the, here it's an incomplete coverage, the greater trochanta should be visible in all x-rays. But you can see it here in this view, three lines converging, radiopic lines, Fryman-Dale sign. Right? And this is also called coffee bean sign. So it is usually seen in vegetarians and they have it because the mesentery, the meso colon is narrow. We call it meso sigmoid here. So therefore one treatment could be make the base wide. And that is called meso sigmoid. Plasty. What do you do there? This is your narrow mesentery. Make a vertical incision, making sure the blood vessels are not damaged, mm -hmm. and then close it transversely so the base becomes white. Clear? That is mesosigmoidoplasty. But it can still cause problem. The other is to take away the redundant colon, because then the length is gone. But have we treated the patient completely? No. Third is sigmoidopexy. Fix it to the variety. 
this is the worst treatment according to me because this becomes a focus for rotation then but in emergency when you don't have a very fit patient there is a risk of patient dying of treatment you can do sigma dopexy and come out because fibrosis will fix it so then don't fix at one point fix it constantly i mean multiple places so that it becomes a you know relatively a fixed structure so sigma dopexy meso sigma doplasty resection of sigmoid and colostomy or anastomosis if the patient's apache score is good understood and ilo sigmoid not is also called as gordian knot <coughs> gordian knot is a greek knot kept in a temple in greece so before alexander had to go for conquering the world is guru guru is very important not teacher everybody is a teacher guru is a few his guru was aristotle who aristotle so he took him to this temple and said can you open this knot because the myth was if not you can conquer the world so he looked at it for a long time nobody could open it, it was the knot is difficult to open so he kept looking at it and aristotle keep on kept wondering how is it going to do it so he just picked up his sword and cut it into a piece and that that's how i look that you will conquer the world right so that is the gordian knot and based on that we call it gordian knot but it's called ilesic point knotting because it's a very dangerous quick quickly progressing uh problem so this is the same symptoms but exaggerated so it be, kind of becomes small bowel is involved as well as large bowel is involved don't try to open the knot if you open it you will cause the same thing ischemic contents of the dead thing would become revascularized that's dangerous chop 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 stoma here and you're out do what alexander did that's exactly what i was saying don't try to untie it which is too difficult to untie it so what do you do you would disconnect resect resect take it out intact if there is no gangrene and you are very early then that's a different story you can untie it like a snake being untied and it falls back but still you need to manage so i like sequent knotting is usually seen in patients or people fasting in middle east and on in ramadan when they fast for a long periods and then they have suddenly a lot of food in the night so that causes hyperperistalsis and that causes alessic wide knotting common in the south after lots of these farmers villages would eat a lot of rice in the night and then todi huh? you take todi yes, so but you know what it is yes sir yeah, what is it sir actually it is obtained from palm tree uh, extracted sap of the from palm tree. so it's kind of a beer beer or alcohol whatever levels are there and that is what will call does again yes, so they have rapid movement and ileic mind knotting there is i think i have done some talk somewhere you can always follow it long yes. clear yes, yes that's the management of these cases i have told you all the management of sigma valvulus ileic mind knotting how to approach them and how to approach the gordian knot which is the same as ileic mind knotting clear yes, gordian knot so remember alexander and you remember the gordian knot <coughs> and that in this case surgeon becomes alexander he just clamps clamps out and a stoma you know whenever in doubt take it out don't leave it inside if you do you're leaving a time bomb inside it will open up any time because the apache score invariably is poor in these patients so they are not going to heal right so don't only bail out the patient bail yourself also out of it so live to fight another day don't die on that date sir you and patient both yes sir clear yes yes sir. needless to say you will resuscitate you will build up the patient for surgery should not die of surgery optimum optimization of a patient before any emergency is mandatory with wheel in patients who are bleeding that's okay but we should not try to do something on a suboptimally optimum i mean managed patient yes. had a uh, history of an unknown is uh, left upper thigh sir and uh, knee uh, left uh, swelling sir uh, 
uh, uh, he came to us in the emergency sir uh, on examination sir he was tachycardic sir so local examination revealed blackish discoloration of the skin with few with a few areas of slough and pus sir uh, we had uh, made a diagnosis of necrotizing soft tissue infection post uh, insect bite sir uh, we had managed him with iv antibiotics sir we had done debridement sir we had sent for tissue culture also sir and we are doing daily debridement uh, of the wound sir uh, antibiotics sir currently is an augmentin and dialysis sir he is uh, no episode of fever sir the wound is also getting better sir we have put a below uh, above knee slab sir to prevent any contracture of the limbs sir and uh, so we are managing by daily dressing sir only issue is hbs sir 6 sir chronic uh, so you have heard it no? insect bite alone mild problem little insult and the patient develop necrotizing soft tissue infection the term is not necrotizing fascia it is it is nsti necrotizing soft tissue infection which is usually symbiotic gangrene mm-hmm. aerobes and anaerobes both are there and this happens symbiotic means aerobes eat away all the oxygen yes. and, and the dead material is created and anaerobes live in the absence of oxygen and then they produce the food for aerobes so they help each other yes. so release and surgical intervention is the key and there is an NS- nsti index so which you is- measure So there is an L-Renix score, sir. Uh, What is that? Laboratory risk index in, uh, indicator for necrotizing uh, soft tissue infection, sir. It has, sir, six components, sir. Uh, hemoglobin, TLC, sodium, uh, urea, uh, CRP. Uh, one more, sir. One more, sir, I'm not remembering. But, uh, sir, when we calculate it, sir, more than six is a uh, in, uh, likely indicator of uh, necrotizing soft tissue infection, sir. And there is also push test also, sir. If the surgeon who is doing the uh, procedure, sir, If he is able to insert his finger without any uh, force, sir, within the fascia plane, sir, that area is also known, and that area likely has to go, sir. Very good point. The push test is what we use in surgical practice. Very nicely explained, uh, Karan. A good registrar would be visible. If you are pushing your finger, and if there is no resistance, push test is what we practice in our unit, and that tissue is dead. Otherwise, every tissue has a resistance. Debridement is a term taken out of Latin. Debrima means to unleash. It's not the same as surgical toilet. We unleash till it, which means till it bleeds. We keep cutting, but don't cut a major vessel. The small, tiny vessels can be cut, and that's how we do that. And the entire thing is treated by good oxygenation by opening it up. Anaerobes are taken care of. Dead tissue being removed will be a regular process. And never do all debridement on one day one. It is serial debridements. Okay. And during the debridement, uh, Arun, what precautions do you take? What do you do? Sir, uh, during debridement, what is the position of your scalpel? Sir, it should be parallel. We should do Excellent. the debridement in place. It should be horizontal. Mm-hmm. I w- I only ask one question, and I'll know. That's like biopsy of a score biopsy to know what whether it is benign or malignant. Grade everything is known. So the score biopsy says he's doing well, and he'll do well. Horizontal blade, but a vertical mind. Yes. Yes. Will you remember that? Yes. What do you mean by vertical mind, Aman? You have answered nothing today. Terry. So you are thinking straight, and you deep. Tissue which is deeper. The tissue which is deeper. The planes which are uh, <coughs> underneath the vessels which are underneath. So, whenever you're making an incision in surgery, it's very important to make sure that you are aware of the neurovascular bundle underneath. All incisions are parallel to it. Don't be direct on a vessel. Take a little zigzag so that when you close or leave it open, the vessel is not exposed. Exposing the vessel to the environment is the surest way to establish or to cause blowouts. Avoid that. Like you must have heard me say that in neck dissection. We don't take that vertical limb, bang on the vessel. We go behind, behind and we take a little lazy as that. Good. So, mind goes deeper, scalpel goes parallel, and go in layers, never vertically, and use nothing else, not scissors. Use scalpel. Why not scissors, uh, Rishi? Well, uh, one, end of, one end of the scissors, we, we cannot uh, see the end of the scissors. So, what is the end cannot be seen? But don't go that far. You see, any instrument which has got two blades will first crush and then cut. 
So if you're dealing with a normal tissue, that will get crushed unnecessarily. Scalpel doesn't do it. Apple to apple comparison, scalpel is superior to scissors. With any instrument that has got two blades, will first crush and then cut. And crushing is not good. That leaves a dead tissue inside, which will tomorrow you'll have to cut again. Yes. So scalpel horizontal, mind deeper. And do limited debrima each day so that eventually you achieve the result. When do you put this patient on VAP therapy now? That's a protocol we follow. When would you do it? Sir, uh, when we are sure that there is no anaerobic infection. Okay. How do you establish that? Sir, we will take deep tissue culture. Very good. An excellent postgraduate will manage his patients optimally because he's understanding what he's doing. A monkey with a knife is dangerous. Why is he dangerous? He cuts throats of people unnecessarily. Surgeon with a scalpel is not a knife. Clear? So, you must prepare the wound bed for vacuum assisted therapy because that is when you will be achieving. You don't want anaerobic environment. Why don't we want anaerobic environment in vac therapy? Gokul? Sir, the vac will already create an anaerobic environment. Okay, so pr promote. Because the whole concept is to create hy hypoxia for proliferation of vessels for angiogenesis. So this would produce, this will promote the anaerobes. Right? Use that index, NSTI score, for managing the patient. You know, work hard at creating protocols and scores in surgery. But then follow them like a gospel. Then only you get outcomes. Clear? Any other question? Any question here? Okay.